So, hey everyone, this is Harshita from Design Hill, your host for the day. So, before I start, here's just quick a quick check. So, am I audible to you all? Just comment on your chat section and we'll get to know. Okay, that's great, that's great. We got one, yes. Cool, cool. So, I hope you and your family are keeping well and safe. And I would like you all to welcome for our AMA session, How to Build a Foundation for Your Brand. So today's event is brought to you by Design Hill World Creative Marketplace that caters to the creative needs of businesses and individuals alike who can source high quality designs from professional designers. Through its print on demand marketplace called the Print Shop by Design Hill, you can also buy 50 plus unique products with thousands of artworks created by world class community of independent starters. Moving Avia, so in three countries and four sectors, Prima has worked, worked with and developed brands that resonate global audiences. So thank you so much, Prima, for taking out your time from your schedule and joining us today. Very happy to be here. Thank you so, so much. You like great, great. No, so before we start, be here. thanks. <laughs> So before we start the session, here's a quick update. You can take the screenshot of this event and post it on your Instagram stories, tagging Design Hill DH and Seema Batavia. And one lucky winner will have a chance to win a print shop gift card worth $50. And along with that, with a gesture of appreciation that you could join us for this event, we have some special offers for you all waiting. So keep an eye on the chat section to get your offer. So having said that, let's quickly look at what Design Hill is all about. All right, that was all about Print Shop by Design Hill, and now we are all set to start the session. So we will be taking up uh, live questions also, so you can just post it on your questions tab, and if you have the similar question, you can just click on upload, and we'll be taking up the questions. So Seema, let's begin with the AMA session, and our first question from one of our registrant is, what is the definition of brand? The brand is the perception of you. So the perception that other people hold of you in their mind, that is the brand. So this comes from a cumulative effort of your background, your expertise, and the efforts that you're making, and the space that you're occupying in their mind. That is a brand. Oh, that was so up. <laughs> so moving ahead. Our next question is, what are the key components of a solid brand foundation? Well, there are two things you have to talk about. One is a personal brand and one is a corporate brand. I'll talk about a personal brand because that's something that I'm a big proponent of. So as far as the foundations of a solid personal brand goes, you have to be very clear on who you are as a person. You have to be clear on what others perceive you as. And you have to be very clear on your big why, which is your big purpose. So you have to be clear on what it is that you want to accomplish as a whole in life before you set out to do anything else. So you need to have all these things in place and ask yourself a set of questions and lay the groundwork, find your vision, find your mission, find your values, ask yourself very crucial questions before you proceed with that. So I would say understanding who you are understanding how others perceive you and understanding what you want to do in life and the impact you want to have those are very very crucial to understand the foundations of a brand great 
and uh, a bit about the second uh, point you said whatever you said about the two points were there right personal brand and the corporate one and a, and a corporate, the corporate brand. so corporate brands have similar foundations but in different ways so if you think about corporate brands as an entity a, a personal brand is a singular person so the same principle applies but it's a bit more complex so the same things you have to understand the big why the impact that you want to have you have to lay out your core values so what is important to you as a company what things mean to you you have to understand your mission which is what you want to accomplish you have to understand your vision is where you want to go as far as your brand goes and you have to understand your methodology and your positioning is what kind of positioning do you want to have in people's minds so very similar but personal brand is on a singular level and corporate brand is on a larger level yeah so of course the tg will be obviously the difference will be there in the tgs of course so we'll exactly. get exactly uh, we'll get there also so my next question is how to determine your brand core messaging your brand core messaging comes from your values and again your big why so depending on what kind of impact you want to have and what kind of values you have as a person or a company for example it shows what's important to you and it also shows what your big goals are right so when you map out all of these what your goals are what your what your big mission is what your big vision is and you understand what is important to you in terms of values that's when you can put them together and then come up with a core messaging you cannot do this without having the others first great great so how it all started how you got to know that you are so good at it and everything <laughs> good at it i hope uh, i have been in the marketing and branding field for about a decade now it's a long time but i discovered my love for branding when i started launching brands for companies so i've worked with several companies in my career and i've launched several brands for them in the food space you know in in the furniture space and i've done a lot and what i enjoyed doing was working with individuals as well so i started working with people around me you know for no charge who needed help with their branding who needed help in their career who needed help trying to position themselves in a certain way to get to a certain place and i discovered that i loved creating so i loved creating brands and doing the foundation work and mapping out the visual identities and understanding where they were and where they wanted to go that brought me a lot of joy so this is what i do i love doing this for people and you know it's something that i i keep doing as much as i can wow so uh, can you just share one of your insight or one of your uh, favorite part which you did as you said you are doing you did it for free also so is there mm -hmm, anything mm -hmm. you have in your memories related to your work well of course one of my favorite brands that i've launched is a food brand but beyond that i love working with people and i helped a friend um position themselves to land their dream job and i was it it brought me a lot of joy because when you have no direction it seems like everything is muddy it seems like there's no hope you know that kind of hopeless feeling but the problem isn't you the problem is your positioning it's because you don't know how to leverage your skills to make sure that you're showing them the right way you know so we were able to kind of map that out together so that at the end of it they had their dream job and they had a solid brand and they're quite sought after so projects like those bring me a lot of joy where if you have a certain skill set and if you have a certain passion or determination or wanting to make an impact somewhere you can put all of that together and kind of craft this brand that people see right and perceive you as and gain authority become an expert and that entire process for me that's something that stands out to me is i love doing it for people yeah that's why your brand strategist <laughs> <laughs> i love it i i can keep i can keep doing it all night yeah uh, actually yeah uh, whatever you love it becomes a hobby and if it's your job then it's the best thing that ever could exactly. be exactly great 
so what are the things to consider when designing your brand identity designing your brand identity that should come last at the very 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 last so once you have your foundation set once you have your core values done and once you've done your positioning statement, once you've done your target audience, your competitors, once you've done the full mapping of the market and you know exactly where you are, that is when you can proceed with the visual identity. You cannot proceed to visual identity or design before you have these in place because everything will be missing otherwise. I see this mistake being made a lot is where people just jump to make a logo or people just jump to make this big elaborate brand because they have a name already but everything else is not done yet but then what happens is that once the brand evolves there's a mismatch once you get closer to your goals that visual identity doesn't match anymore because you rushed right so you need to make sure all of your foundational pieces are in place you need to make sure you've mapped out your target audience your competitors your benchmarking your positioning your elevator pitch your everything before you embark on anything visual visual doesn't take as much time as foundational does because the foundational is the core of your brand. It's what it's the heart and visual is everything else. It's the clothes you wear, you know, it's that can be changed up quite easily. But the core is something that needs to be set before you even embark on that. Yeah, it's similar like a creating a building. We should have a foundation first in the basement to the last and then we uh, stand the building. Exactly. You have no foot to stand on if you have no solid foundation. Now, you know, you can make the prettiest brand out there, but then if it's hollow, if it has no positioning, if it has no tone, no voice, no value systems, no, uh, no vision, no mission, they don't know where they want to go, they don't know who their audience is, how to speak to their audience, what their core offering is, everything else will be hollow, right? But then you've got this pretty brand. It's kind of like you see a very attractive person. For example, you know, and we all know this example where you see like pretty people who are amazing looking and they're amazing, but when you get to know them, there's no substance. So that's an analogy where you want to make sure that there's substance as well as attractiveness, you know, as far as your brand goes. Yeah, that's true. That's so, true. That's and looks are always deceptive. <laughs> so oh, I wouldn't say always deceptive. Sometimes if you map everything right you can reflect your brand very, very clearly, right? But when you do it wrong, when there's a mismatch, that's when the looks are deceptive, where you feel like the expectation didn't meet the reality. Yeah. So we clearly need to follow the steps and then get to the designing part and the visualization part. Absolutely. Uh, visualization, the visual identity, the design part should come at the very last, in my opinion. Great. So our next question is, how to build the base for your brand? How to build the base? So basically the foundation, right? So I will talk about personal branding because that's, that's what I'm doing a lot. So the first thing I like to do is talk about yourself. Who are you as a person? So what are your skill sets on paper, right? What did you learn in school? What is your professional degree in? What is your professional experience in? What kind of certifications do you have? You have to map everything out to make sure that you have certain skill sets and what do you have? You know, just to ensure that you have that in place, right? Then you have to talk about your passions. What do you like to do, you know? So you can easily transfer this to a corporate, which I can discuss after this, but as a person, what are your passions? What do you enjoy doing? What do you like to do? So what would you do for free? For example, right? What did you enjoy doing as a child? Because what happens is that for most of us, our purest passions come as children, you know? And when we're children, um, we love doing things without, you know, any kind of bore, uh, restraints or any issues. But when you become adults, that kind of gets diluted because responsibilities set in, we start adulting, you know, sometimes we're unsuccessful, but it's what we do right and you have to map out your skills uh then you have to map out your passions and that becomes a robust question of who you are as a person you also have to look at how you're perceived by other people because remember you can know you're a brand 
But unless other people know you're a brand, you're not a brand, right? So you have to make sure that you understand how people around you see you as well. So what do your friends say about you? You know, what is your family saying about you? What do they think that you're good at? What are your strengths? You know, these are very important questions to ask because sometimes we don't even see our own strength because to us it's second nature, right? But when other people see it or other people kind of point it out for us, that's when we know that, okay, this is actually a strength because if other people are saying it, then I probably am good at this, right? Then you look at professional relationships. So your colleagues, people that you've worked with in the past, what are they saying about you? People that you're working with eight hours a day, your suppliers, your customers, what are they saying about you? This is a, a good indicator because you get to know how you react in a transactional setting as opposed to a professional setting. So you know how you're perceived as a whole. You also need to understand that you have an online presence. So how are you perceived online? Do you have an online footprint? Do you have an online presence? What are your search results saying? Are any search results embarrassing you or putting you off? You know, what kind of um, results are there which are causing you to be a bit off, right? Then you have to understand what you believe in as a person. This is where the core values come in. What is important to you, right? What are beliefs that you stand by in life as a whole? Like if there are certain rules that you believe in in life, what are they? So you have to map out those core values as well and understand what your core beliefs are, you know, that are static and never change. Um, you also have to understand the impact that you want to have. So your big why, right? Do you do this questioning? You try to understand how they see you, how you see yourself. You have to ask yourself, what am I setting out to do? For example, if you're the next Uber or the next Apple or the next you, for example, are you trying to change the world in some way? Are you trying to eradicate hunger? Are you trying to become the next um, tech company that's going to take over the world? That big why needs to be there, right? And on the back of that, you need to have a vision. A vision is where you want to go, right? So if you say you're going to eradicate hunger, that's still a big promise, right? That's a big goal. But a vision is where you can actually go. So if you're saying, I want to eradicate hunger, you know, as my big why, I want to make sure there's no hunger left in the world, your vision will be, I want to make sure that no children go without food in all countries. That's a bit more actionable, right? So the vision starts to take sh shape after your why because you have your core values in place, you know what you have, and then you think about your mission. Your mission is how you get there. So if your big why is eradicating hunger, if your vision is no, ch no child is, in a, is going to go without food, your mission will be how will they not go without food? Does this mean I will eradicate hunger by making sure that no child goes without food by ensuring that every household has access to food. So you see, you went to the how part, how you're going to make this happen. So you need to make sure all of these questions are answered and in place before you set out to do anything. So this kind of builds the core of your brand. And the combination of these will be your message. What I just stated, that I want to eradicate hunger by making sure that all children have access to food, by making sure that every household gets food. So does that make things clear? You just need to make sure that you answer these core questions and all of that shapes that one message. I hope that's clear. That is a lot clearer. And uh, if I may say, it's like key, um, you have to first think about the idea part, then the purpose of it, then the implementation, and then the execution part. Exactly. And even the execution and implementation, that the minute of that, that comes as you go. But you need to have the grand plan in place, right? You don't know what the execution is going to be right off the bat. You know, tomorrow your situation will be very, very different. But your core, right, your core mission that I'm going to make sure that no household uh, goes without food, right, that is your core. How you do it, that's going to depend on your strategy going forward, right? But you need to make sure those core, that 
the heart of your brand, that is solid before you start anything. And thank you, Brian. I'm so glad that helped. <laughs> so how about if uh, some strategy fails, then how to get back to that? We should have a backup plan also. And what about that? Like as if uh, we are planning, uh, we were planning to have a TikTok influencer thing and everything like that. And then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. TikTok was banned. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. We are left with nothing now. So, correct. How to do, uh, deal with that thing? So, you know what I would say to that, Hashida? And you're welcome, Renee. I'm glad that helped. I would say your strategy was TikTok, but your why was not TikTok. What was your why? Your why was to spread the knowledge or influence of design. The means was TikTok, the plan was TikTok. So your core why has not changed. The impact you want to have is not changed. You are talking about result versus features and benefits, right? The means was TikTok. Today, TikTok isn't there, but there are other means, right? You could use reels. You could use shorts that vid, uh, YouTube has come out with. But your core reason of using those influencers, that has not changed. So as long as you don't change the why, of why you wanted to use the TikTok influencer, you can use whatever means you need to, right? Yes, your strategy will change, but that again is business acumen. That again is what kind of, um, how, how you can think on your feet, for example, what kind of people you employ, you know, if they're strategic, you know, how they can come up with creative ideas. Those are the hows. The why needs to remain the same. So as long as you don't lose sight of the why on why you wanted to use a TikTok influencer, then you can pivot easily and come up with alternatives. But the way you do it, that will depend on your own strategic team. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it did. And thank you so much for helping me out. <laughs> but don't worry. There are several alternatives to TikTok. You know, now Reels is completely everywhere. So use reels people love them right now yeah the uh, reach is also awesome for reels right now and it's, it's, high. it's a new thing yeah it is so my next question is how to choose your target audience okay your target audience will depend on your offer that you want to make right so the impact you want to make and your offer that you want to make so let's take the hunger example if you're target if your impact that you want to make is to eradicate hunger your target audience will be okay who are the people who are hungry so this is where your research comes in you have to make sure that you've done all of the research primary secondary research to ensure that you know what markets are hungry so to speak where this problem is more prevalent and where the pain points are right so once you understand through a lot of market research through online, uh, social media, checking forums, checking all kinds of systems to understand where this particular impact that you want to have, you know, where is it going to have the most impact? If I say hunger, we immediately know that, okay, Africa might be a market because we all know collectively that that's a market, right? If we choose, okay, I want to create the next um, bionic robot, we have to go deeper and understand uh, and research where that might be most beneficial. If you created a bionic robot, which market would, would benefit most from that? So what would you look at? You'd look at places where technology is up and coming, where they are looking at streamlining systems, where there are more people who are accepting of new technologies, you know, where they have maybe a lower population and need help, you know, so you have to look at determinants of what impact you want to have. Once you have your big impact that you want to make, that's when you can map out, okay, if this is the impact, who would be most beneficial? And again, you have to research as many means as possible, depending on the sector that you're in, you would have to use those means and depending on the offer that you have. So you say, I want to create a bionic robot, but there are 10,000 types of bionic robots. Is this a bionic robot that uh, is waterproof or underwater? Is this uh, a robot that delivers UI UX? Is this someone that is in the food space? So 
there are several iterations to this, right? So you need to make sure the target market that you're looking at addresses your big impact and your offer. And once you combine these, you'll be able to pinpoint the exact audience because the audience will have a need that you can solve, that your bionic robot can solve. Does that help a little bit? Get us, it did, it did. <laughs> the example of bionic robot, I know where that came from. <laughs> uh, actually, I was also thinking about how and when it can work. <laughs> yeah, so any product or any service that you come up with, start with the impact, you know, the why, the impact that you want to make. Then think, if I want to have this impact, who would benefit from this impact? Who am I trying to impact? And once you have a vague idea, OK, this is the type of person I can impact, go deeper, research. Research, research, research. Look online, what is being said? Who's using these resources? Who's using this service? Is there even a market for the service or not? And if there is a market, who would be using it most? And then kind of go deeper and deeper and pinpoint that one person. Great, great. That was fairly awesome. So Yay. now. <laughs> um, I've, uh, now we can take the live questions. So uh, you can just check our questions tab. Uh, okay. The first question was, I have been in graphic design industry and created mm -hmm. brands for other people. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to myself, I can't come up with ideas. I think my own visual identity is not good enough. What do you suggest? Well, first of all, Masa, I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure your visual identity is banging. So so don't worry. But what I would do, Masa, is I would move away from the visual first. Your visual identity is not you. What's you is the core that we just discussed, right? So whatever core values that you have, whatever big why that you have, your vision and mission that you have, map those out on paper. Actually write down those things on paper, OK? What you'll see is you will start seeing a brand on paper. It, it's going to start taking shape, right? It's going to have a certain perception. Now, let's say, for example, if your uh, core value is education and transparency and future, right? Future thinking, innovation. When you think about the three of these and you map out your big why or the impact you want to have as a graphic designer, where you want to go, the colors are going to start taking shape because colors have meaning. Colors are associated with value. Okay, That's the first step that you start taking shape with colors. Again, are you a feminine brand? Are you a masculine brand? Are you a technical brand? Are you a funny brand? Are you an approachable brand? Are you a premium brand? Are you a sophisticated brand? All of these things, all these things matter because your logo or design is going to come through that. You know, do you prefer sketches? Do you prefer illustrations? Do you prefer uh, sophisticated lines? Do you prefer blocky lines? Do you prefer um, anything that's quickly hand drawn? You know, all of these know what you stand for. Once you know what you stand for, then it's easier to create a visual identity for yourself. So what my advice to you would be, Masa, is to map all of your core foundational stuff on paper and then do the visual identity. The visual identity comes from knowing your values, comes from knowing where you stand you know, in, in the market in comparison to others and how you want to position yourself. Because doing it blindly is doing yourself a disservice. Don't do it according to your hobby or what you like. Do it according to what you want others to see you as. OK, so I, I would recommend doing the foundational work and then embarking on the visual. And then you'll see it's going to match perfectly. Great. So I hope, Masa, I hope your, answer, question your, question, your question got answered. So uh, all right, guys, I hope you're enjoying the session. So before we move forward, I would like to give a quick shout out to Design Hill, World Creative Marketplace. Yeah. Uh, for organizing this event and I hope you guys are sharing this event screenshot on your Insta stories and tagging Design Hill and Seema. So come on guys, you can win. You can be a lucky winner. Thank you, screenshot. I'm going to pose. <laughs> I can also. There you go. 
<laughs> we can both pose. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so right. let's take a quick break and keep this interesting conversation going on. Stay tuned. Yay. We'll be right back here to more to hear more from Seema. Awesome. So. I've always been creative and always been an artist. I've as always a been young creative. Girl, I used to paint rocks and I used to sell them for a quarter on the street. And, <laughs> and I just fell in love with it. It just grew into <laughs> a passion of mine. I started looking on the web and I came across Design Hill. And they had a design contest to design a logo and I entered it and and I won. And I was like, oh, this is really great. And I can pick I and choose I like, oh, what type of really logos or design projects I want to work on. And it allows me to be creative, keep my hands you know, with my tools and, and working. So it's kind of nice. It's really easy to use. You can scroll through it's really the projects and there's sections that you could go by. But it's really easy. There's a few clients who have come back to use the one-on-one -on -one projects. There's one client in particular, she owns a vintage shop and I designed her logo and she came back. She needed a design for a flyer and she really liked the illustrations that I did for her. So she came back a couple of times with projects. I would recommend it, especially um, if you you're a designer, a designer that's starting out and you want to learn from other designers, seasoned designers. It's a place to keep the game and keep using your to tools. It makes me feel great and it kind of confirms makes me that I should be doing this. And I love I to see logos that I've designed I out and I'm proud of that. And I think that the clients are so happy that their logo represents what they do and you know makes them look good. It's a collaboration. And it's good for me and it's definitely good for them. Collaboration for me. So all right guys, we are back again with our awesome awesome guest Seema. So guys, <laughs> don't forget to ask your questions in the questions tab and answer our polls too. So Seema, let's continue our session. And my yes. next question is, and my next question is, what are the steps to creating an offer? Steps to create an offer. So the, you have to first of all understand what your offer is. Your offer is the value that you're providing, right? So it is a combination of what you're good at, what your skills are, what your background is, and what there's a demand for. Right, So you need to make sure you have all of these in place and you've done thorough mapping of the market and thorough mapping of the industry to understand whether what you have to offer as a person is going to coincide with what other people want. So I recommend to people that whenever you are trying to create a signature offer, you outline, number one, what you like to do. You know, as a person, as a company, what is it that you are good at doing? Like, what, what do you enjoy doing? You know, like something that you can do all day, all night. Number two, what do you do best? What do you have the skills to do? So we again look at what we mapped out on paper, right? What do we have the professional training to do? You know, what is it that, you know, we are skilled to do? So you take what you like doing. You take what is it that you are skilled to do? And we talk about what your audience wants. So again, you've done your market research, you've mapped out exactly you know, what the people's pain point is, and you, the combination of your skills and what you enjoy doing can address those pain points. That's how you create the big offer. Do not create an offer until you have these three things in place. Because what happens is if you create an offer with just what your skills are and what the audience wants, you're going to be miserable because you don't enjoy doing it. But if you enjoy doing it and your skill set is there and you create an offer, then there's no market for it. So again, you know, you're going to lose out. You have to make sure you have the combination of all three of these because then you'll be able to have a profitable offer. Does that make sense? Yes, it did. It did. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's take uh, one question from our live attendees. Sure. I am trying to brand myself as an influencer, but I'm from Caribbean. 
mm-hmm. it's a relatively new industry for the region how can i brand myself to get noticed by the brand locally and internationally the way i see it makina i think that this is the best time for you if it's a brand new industry that means you can be one of the first people so you have to show them the value that you're bringing as an influencer so i would make people see why you are a viable influencer what can you do that other people cannot you know so this has to come through you know the way you present yourself what you do how you do it how you talk to people how you can convince people or influence people you have to walk the talk so you have to influence before even becoming an influencer so you have to start influencing your community now i don't know if you're trying to do this on instagram or which a uh, platform you're trying to do this on but instagram or other social platforms they thrive on community so i would start doing a lot of outreach start talking to a lot of people start showing your true personality start like building this community and building friendships and relationships and be very prominent you know be everywhere and what's going to happen is people will take notice they'll be like okay who is she you know she's come out of nowhere you know she's very prominent people are listening to her and that's when the brands reach out they're going to be like okay other people are listening to her we need to take notice you know and that's how you're going to become that influencer locally internationally doesn't matter they all come once they see that you're able to influence people exactly the internet is all about that only <laughs> It is and in this day and age every everything is one big platform you know everything is online everyone's watching so it's a prime time for you great so how to optimize your online presence oh that's a really really good one so optimizing your online presence um i always tell people to have their own website first of all so the thing about being online is that social media or other platforms i call them rented space okay they're not yours they're someone else's platform you only occupy space right while your website is your own home it's your own real estate so no matter what happens <laughs> tiktok for example you know your hard work is not wasted a lot of people have lost their livelihoods because of that you know they built entire careers on Instagram and then they lost it all sorry TikTok and then they lost it all because it suddenly shut down. So the first thing I would do is safeguard yourself, okay? Create your own online presence. So landing page, website, doesn't matter what it is, make sure you have your own hub where you can drive people to, okay? This is where your offer is going to live. This is where everything is going to be. You're going to drive your traffic to your own place because you need to make sure they're coming to your home. and use the social platforms as a, as a traffic generator okay so to optimize your online presence first of all do a massive google search on yourself to see what's coming up you need to go scour the internet to see what's being said about you what kind of search results there are what people are saying if there's something that you don't like or something you don't don't want people to see make sure that it goes offline and you need to make sure that you kind of like start from a clean slate yeah and once you do that then you can start building on that identity you need to make sure your website is set you know according to the portrayal you want to give other people that same portrayal of your identity needs to be across the board so whatever platform you choose to be on you don't need to be on five platforms that's a misconception you don't need to do this choose two or three where your core audience is linkedin twitter uh pinterest instagram you know there there are many pick two or three which are most important to you have the same identity across the board so that anyone who goes to twitter knows exactly that you are the same uh person that came from instagram for example so it's not two dual identities so make sure you have a professional photograph that it's not too shabby depending on the type of um you know positioning you have and the portrayal you want to give other people make sure that your uh internet records are kind of clean so if a search is for you knows that you know you are legitimate and trustworthy and create content now our online identities they thrive on content 
So content is mainly for SEO and to establish yourself as an expert. So the more content you create, the more Google crawls you and the more you become searchable, right, with keywords. And the more people see content from you, the more they see that you know things and the more of an expert you become. So make sure your presence across the board is uniform and that you have a pro pro professional photograph, you have your value proposition, which is your offer, what you stand for, and you have everything uh, ready as far as your content is concerned. Talking about the content thing only, my next question is <laughs> how to develop the content strategy in place? Your content strategy is going to depend on your goals. Now, a lot of people think that content strategy is just, you know, post whatever you can, but that's not the case. So depending on how you want to be perceived, your content needs to flow accordingly, right? So I'm just trying to think of an example on how we can create content. If you are an influencer, for an example, and you, your main goal is to get brands to come on board, you need to make sure that through your content, you are convincing people that brands are using you to influence. So showcase the results, showcase the benefits that you are giving as an influencer, right? So depending on what your goal is, the impact that you want to have, what kind of perception you want to have, if you want people to see you as an expert, if you want to have an educational goal, if you want to have an entertainment goal, what kind of goal that you want to have, the big why, right, the impact, then you map out content clusters. So if your goal is to influence, then your content clusters might be, okay, show the results that you've gotten for brands, show the other influencers you've worked with, show you know what your own interests are, show you know how your own interests or your passions coincide with the values that the brand has so you will develop content geared specifically in these content pillars because by reading your content someone is going to become convinced that this person aligns with me and i want to work with them because they are showcasing exactly what i'm looking for so again think of the impact think of the big why think of the goal and then create the content. Exactly. So that was so apt, so perfect. And yes, I'm going to apply that. <laughs> so my next question Good. from... Uh, because, you know, content is the best way to generate traffic. Sorry, continue. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm there, I'm there. Actually, there's some issue with your internet, I guess. So it was a bit delay in the uh, conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. My internet uh, is okay. very, very bad today. No worries. So the highly upvoted question from our live attendees is, uh, the second question you might check, starting out a new brand is scary. What advice mm -hmm. would you give to someone who's just starting a brand, knows what needs to be done, but is a lot in their head and is unable to get stuff done Aww. just because of that fear? It's, it's very common. Ashada. It's extremely, extremely common because you know what? Starting something new is scary. And what happens to most of us is that we get imposter syndrome. We're like, okay, we have this big idea. I know exactly what I need to do but I don't think I can do it. What are people gonna say? What's my family going to say? You know, what are my friends gonna say? Who am I to start this? You know, I'd rather just not do it altogether. And that's, that's the imposter syndrome speaking. You know, it's not the skills. It's not the capability. It's not the passion either. If you have the passion, you should go for it. But the main thing is to just affirmations, right? You have to tell yourself that you are capable of this, you are more than worthy of this. You deserve this. And why not? Why not now is the question. You know, a lot of people say that older people, you know, when they get older, their regret is not doing things rather than doing it and failing. So think of that. Think of that. Okay, what's the worst that can happen? You're going to fail. 
what's the worst that can happen? People are going to talk. They're talking anyway, right? They're talking anyway. Whether you do it, whether you not do it, they're going to talk. So might as well do something that's fun for you. So do something that you want to do. You know, take calculated risks. You know, take take the take the risks that you want to take, because these risks that speak to you. You know, these nagging risks. Those are the ones that pay off because they're the ones that come from intuition. They're the ones that come from like this voice that speaks in your head. Go for it. It's just that imposter syndrome speaking. Otherwise, you know, knock yourself out. Do it. That's what I say. Great. Yeah, actually, uh, taking risks is the best thing. If it if you get through it, we are successful, and if not, we have learned something. Exactly. Cool. So now let's take the next question from our attendees, mm -hmm. and it's from uh, let's take the first one from Oana. Do you think you can start or launch your brand without having a huge budget for it? Absolutely. Uh, but again, okay, is it a brand that's a corporate brand or a private brand, like a personal brand? Because corporate brands, if your brand is a product. That can take manufacturing, that can take inventory, that can take a lot, right? A lot of back end stuff. So you may need a budget for that. Same for services. If you're starting really, really small, maybe you can get away with uh, a lower budget. And I'm just talking corporate, right? Because corporates, you're tr you need to give a service to somebody for them to trust you as a brand. Now, the brand building itself, it doesn't have to cost much but the providing of the service and for your brand to take shape in other people's minds that can take a lot of work as far as corporate is concerned if you ask me uh, for a personal brand you don't need a budget at all you really really don't all you need to do is pick a platform you need to have your own website which can be free you, you don't even need a lot of money for that i need to start creating content once you create content and spend a lot of time, the only investment here is time, you know? And once you have a lot of time to spend and you've spent a lot of time on it, you can build a very robust personal brand, honestly. I don't think you need any money at all unless you're looking to outsource or to do ads or anything like that. Otherwise, not really. Yeah, that's true. Obviously, the product thing will need the budget. Exactly. So depending on what your brand is, what your product is, what your offering is, it's the offer that might cost the money. But I don't think the brand itself has to cost money unless you're looking at like some very full blown strategy, you know, full blown design, you know, anything like that. But you can definitely, you know, start your brand with little to no money for sure. Yes. So my next question is, is personal brand important for studying a study gram, for starting a study gram? What is a study gram? I'm not uh, aware of that. So whoever uh, has written this question, can you please explain in the chat section? So moving ahead, let's take the next question. How important is brand positioning and how do we do that? Brand positioning is very important because brand positioning is basically the position that you as a brand are taking in other people's minds, you know? So depending on how you're perceived by people, that's the value that they're going to place on you. So your understanding of an apple is going to be very different from your understanding of Motorola, right? They occupy very different positioning in your head because that's the way that they have crafted their positioning right and they've done this through consistent messaging the way they talk the the quality of their images the quality of their product their customer service quality you know their um overall customer experience all of that is very 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 different and that's why all of it combined has created a positioning same way you create your brand positioning through the overall 
customer experience from the moment that they learn about your brand how are they learning about it what kind of messaging are you putting out what is the quality of messaging what is the quality of the photos that you're using what is the quality of advertising that you're using what is the quality of um, your posts that you're posting online what is the quality of the actual service or your product what is the quality of your after product you know what is the quality of your full customer service what is the quality of your loyalty programs all of this combined the entire experience is going to craft your positioning the better you do on all of these the better your positioning is and the worse you do on all of these the worse your positioning gets so you should prioritize what's important to you as a brand and what you want to focus on and what kind of positioning you want to have you can have premium positioning you can have cheap positioning you can have sophisticated positioning you can have funny positioning you can have feminine or masculine positioning you know you can have in um you know there are all types of position across the board but it all comes down to the the experience that you're giving to the customer from the moment that they learn about your brand to the moment where they become loyal fans and loyal brand loyalists great so we have got the meaning of studygram here you can just check in the chat section <laughs> sorry uh, no i don't see it. i think it's in the chat section the last comment oh oh sorry sorry my bad my bad simplest form is a study motivation page study grammar share picture of their notes and study spaces to inspire students around to the world oh very nice okay <laughs> that's lovely okay so if you have a personal brand it would be nice you know but the thing about brands that are sharing motivational quotes and stuff like that is that people are not there for you they're there for the quotes you know so no matter if you're talking about the quotes or not people are going to be there but it might be very hard to monetize this down the line because again you have to understand how are people going to pay for this offer you know and in case you want to monetize this down the line then i would really recommend having a personal brand because that personality or that person behind um the offer makes a big big difference so i would i would suggest it sorry just a second i think my computer is doing something funny so this is bringing us to the end of our session and uh, before ending let's take our last question of the session Yay, already and it's uh, what's your advice to someone who is beginning a brand but doesn't want to get out of the box before launch out of the box meaning showing your face or showing your product just thinking of the out of the box i guess mm, no i doesn't want it to get out of the box okay so they don't want people to know about it before the launch i think that's what they're saying so i would say that uh keep it under wraps you know you need to make sure that the people who are working on the brand are trustworthy and people who are there are your core team and also that it's different you know people are not going to replicate things that are extremely different because sometimes it scares them they will only replicate it after it becomes successful you know you have to understand that so i would say that um if you don't want it to get out of the box or for people to know about it right away make sure that all of your research your core team and everything the brand building process is very locked down you know you have an agency or people helping you who are very discreet and you know you have an offer that is unique and that people would be looking forward to so that's what i would say if they meant that by that question great guys so all right this brings us to the end of this wonderful session with sigma and this was indeed a value packed session although there is a lot more that we could have <laughs> that we could have covered and discussed but unfortunately we are limited by time here and i hope you guys loved the session because i personally did and if you want we can come up again with a part 2 of the foundation of your personal brand <laughs> So, I would love to. I would love to. And you know, the foundation doesn't end at the foundation. That's the thing. It always keeps evolving because your foundation basically 
is what helps you down the line. Every time you get stuck, it always comes down to your why, always. No matter what you do, anytime you get stuck in your brand building, you always have to go back to the foundation because you know what? If foundation is weak, your brand will not stand. It's always, always going to crumble. So I really hope that you know you guys place a big, um, you know, priority on foundation as far as visual because that's what I keep preaching is that the foundation is extremely important. Yeah, great. So if you guys want part two of the session then please comment on the chat section and once again thank you so much Seema for taking out your time and be the part of this event i'm very very happy to be here thank you so much for having me thank you to the audience for asking all these wonderful questions and being interactive and it was so lovely to meet all of you and being here <laughs> yeah and if you have any of the questions you can just contact Seema on her instagram profile her instagram is uh, Seema Batavia. So, all yes, right, guys, please. this is not where it ends. Uh, we have a lot more events lined up for you, for you all in the coming days. And the next event is Partnerships and Collaboration Strategies for Business Group. So, if you guys are interested, please register and you can visit our um, events page on um, www.designhill.com slash events page where you can find all the events happened, all the recordings and everything. And to stay updated, if you want any of your personal speakers, any topics you want, then you can comment there only, or you can just uh, tell us on our LinkedIn profile and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find all our recordings there. You can, and yes, and the final thing is also we have recently launched a DIY creative tool called Design Hill Studio, which will empower everyone across the world to unleash the creative talent within themselves be it a designer or a non-designer everyone can create beautiful designs such as business collaterals presentations social media posts banners and much more and that too in few minutes so you can just check it out www.designhill.com studio so on that note i would like to say goodbye to everyone who have joined us here today I have Thanks. one thing to say. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Guys, I would like to invite all of you to take my free personal brand masterclass. It's on my website, simabatavia.com. It's open to everybody. And I think it's going to help you a lot in terms of finding the foundational systems, how to build your personal brand. So I invite all of you to take that class. I think it'll be very helpful. And if you have any questions at any time, reach out to me either by email or on my Instagram or, or anywhere else. I would be very, very happy. Um, hang on, I think someone's asking for the link I'm in. Here. <laughs> you tell it, come. There you go. I hope that helps. And yeah. thank you so much for having me today. Really, really looking forward to meeting all of you again and happy to be here. Thank you. Take care, guys, and stay safe. Bye, guys. <laughs>